My name is Ed Morales. I'm the editorial advisor of The Red and Black. And while I'm doing this, I'm looking at the class. So if you're not in the class of time, imagine I'm looking at you. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, it's not fun to laugh at 8 in the morning, I understand. <laughs> um, I've been up since 6 because my 4-year-old daughter, she's hilarious. Anyway, uh, so my understanding is, is that you are, you can get credit for writing essays. Is that correct? Writing essays to submit to The Red and Black. Um, Essays is kind of an unusual thing. I myself was an English major, so I know all about essays, uh, lots of essays. And uh, part of what, uh, what would fit as an essay in ours would obviously be for the editorial page. Now, obviously everybody knows what the red and black is. I really hope you know what the red and black is. And, and if you don't, just appease me for a little while. Um, uh, we, uh, this is a freshman class, yes? OK, so this used to come out daily last year which is may something you may or may not have known. Um, and it still does come out daily. It just comes out daily on those things you have on your desks. Um, a lot of people who've been here for a while are a little freaked out about the fact that it doesn't come out every day. But then uh, they would probably should have picked it up every day <laughs> last year. And maybe they would still have it every day. But um, writing essays, essays are kind of an unusual thing. Usually uh, what we do is we do stories about individual things. But obviously, we have opportunities to write about things that interest you that aren't necessarily based on anything event-related or whatnot. So, um, and we have that on the editorial page, which, if you haven't seen the editorial page, we've switched it up to something that's called Your Turn and Our Turn, uh, which actually is kind of a misnomer because some of Our Turn is on Your Turn and some of Your Turn is on Our Turn, because uh, we like to mix it up like that. Um, but anyway, anyone who is interested in, anyone could write for the red and black. That's another thing that I should kind of mention. All you have to do is be a student. You don't have to be a journalism major. You don't have to be a junior. Uh, you get paid for whatever it is you do, although if you're writing for the opinion page, you don't, uh, merely for the fact that, um, I don't know, anybody can just write about anything they want. And uh, they often do, but it's not something that we generally pay for, usually because people who write opinions aren't doing it on a continual basis. Um, and we have a lot of opportunities where people write for class at the journalism department. They have a thing called a practicum where they have to write three stories uh, to get credit. Um, and uh, it's interesting because we'll have newspaper majors who actually don't work for the newspaper, um, which is a completely different subject for another day. But So uh, my suggestion to you is if you're interested in writing an essay for the red and black, and again, we take everything that, that people send in. Uh, usually, we're looking for something that's between 450 and 600 words. Uh, and the topic of what you want to do is something that, uh, if you're really interested in writing, uh, let me know and I'll leave some cards here. Or get in touch with someone at the Red and Black. Obviously, there's emails to all of us in the paper. And uh, just tell us what you're writing about. And part of the reason that we do that is that so you're not replicating what somebody else has done or someone else is writing in the process. Um, you know, there's so many topics out there that usually you'll be in a situation where you're not writing about something that someone already has or, or you know, specifically that someone hasn't already written about in the, in the recent past. Um, obviously, since I've been here, there's always cycles and things come back and forth. And so I've read lots of stories about the same thing over and over again. But it's always a different audience. Um, you know, a lot of the times everybody, half a uh, quarter of this school leaves every year. Um, actually, on every semester, we have people leaving and new people coming in. So it's constantly fresh to the, you know, every couple of years, everything is constantly fresh. Um, in terms of, you know, topics that you want to write about, uh, there's nothing that's taboo uh, in the red and black. Uh, we are not a family newspaper. You hear that a lot um, in professional newspapers. And that's, I worked for professional newspapers for 20 years before I came to the University of Georgia. Um, and being as such a family newspaper is that we have the ability to write about things that uh, you wouldn't necessarily see in the Banner Her Herald uh, or the AJC or any other kind of large newspaper you wouldn't see in the New York Times. Uh, some of our language is a little bit more ribald than it would be in other publications. And actually, that kind of really angers people from time to time. We'll have some, um, we had a recent column which uh, had uh, generous use of the F word. And some people got upset by that. I'm not exactly sure why, but that's a joke. OK. Maybe maybe just, OK. Um, 
moving on. Uh, but having said that, obviously, the idea of the language, and this is something that you learn in English, is that uh, you know, if you're using a word, there should be a reason why you're using the word. Uh, the only time we really get into a situation where we have a problem with the language is if it's used in a gratuitous way just to emit a certain shock value. Some would argue that shock value is kind of all we try to do. Um, I would argue that we don't. Uh, but there are times when there are language, when there's certain language used, usually when it's a band review, where they'll just say crazy stuff just to say crazy stuff. Um, and then we take it out. They're like, you're censoring us. I'm like, no, you can say whatever you want. You just, you just can't say it here uh, with our publication because we have the right to do that. Um, there's a certain edit editing process that goes through, and that's not something everybody likes or gets used to, uh, but if you're an English major and this is something you want to do, you need to get used to editing because it's going to happen for the rest of your life. Um, actually, I was funny. I was coming in, and I uh, stopped to use the bathroom, and there's a sign on the wall saying, like, please be respectful of this bathroom or whatever. Um, and there are some certain grammar errors in the particular thing that's above the urinal, and uh, Fortunately, there were some English majors in the building who were correcting it and then writing graffiti around it. So uh, you are editing no matter where you are. Um, if you're like me, if you drive around town, you see a sign that's misspelled. There's actually a, a washing, a place that washes clothes up Baxter where it's seven Mayutes. Um, in seven Mayutes, your, your clothes will be clean. And I don't know what a Mayu is, but somewhere it's probably between a second and a minute. But uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, you know, having said that, it's really easy to do. We'll work with you. Anyone who wants to do something, if you feel that you like it and you want to join the staff, and here's one of the cool things, you can get paid for working for the Red and Black. Um, and it's really easy to do. Um, and you can work as much or as little as you want. You know, we don't, we're not in a situation where we have to pressure anybody to work for us. Some people feel that they like it. Some people feel that they don't. But it doesn't really matter because we have um, a good group of people who are constantly coming up and who are interested. And, you know, regardless of what, uh, you know, it, it gets read. I mean, you know, the papers get picked up, uh, the one day a week paper. Our online, um, we, we view, we have 45,000 to 50,000 page views, which translates to about 20,000 unique visitors a day. So if you write something in the red and black, someone's going to read it. Um, of course, I will also mention that if you write something in the red and black and it goes online, it's there forever. So. If you want to write something like, I think the world is awful and all people should die, that's cool. We don't mind that. Just remember in 10 years, that's still going to be there. And you know, if you want to work for, I don't know, anyone, that might be difficult. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to pitch about what the Red and Black does. I don't know if anybody has any questions. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, you know, I don't know, uh, kind of envision of what you're thinking essay-wise or... Yeah, well, they, they get to pick their own topics, and they've been doing sort of a long-term investigation of it, and they're writing a few short essays. <coughs> so okay. uh, in terms of length, topic, like the audience you're engaging with, kind of anything you want to tell them? Well, I mean, you know, obviously the idea for the Red and Black is that the target is for University of Georgia students and college students in general. Obviously, the faculty are part of it. There are lots of faculty and staff uh, on the university campus, but usually, you know, we're trying to reach the 33,000 or so students that are out there um, and trying to find something that they're interested in. Um, and the thing is, is that if you're interested in it, somebody else is interested in it, there are not wide swaths of things that people are terribly, that, will, that are always interested in stuff um, in certain topics. Uh, there are some topics that no matter what we write, the hot button items, the death penalty, uh, abortion, if you write about the Confederate flag, you're going to get so much response is probably going to scare you. We've had people, for the first time, write columns about things that are a little taboo, and then people get on and, and you know, they write in their comments, anonymous comments, is like, you're horrible, I want you to die. And people are like, oh, wait, I don't want to write anymore because people want to kill me because I have an opinion. But, you know, that's not something you can do in America, I guess. Um, well, you can anonymously, I, I guess. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's really anything that you are interested in writing about, if it interests you, it's going to interest other people. Um, and if it's, you know, well formulated, uh, more well formulated, the formulatic, no, formulated, no. formulated. Formulated is that a word? Yeah. Formulated. It's a well formulated argument. Okay, it sounds good. If not, I can make it up. Um, 
if it's, it's, if it's you know, brought forth and, and it's concise and you're getting to the point. And the idea of all essays, especially in a case like this, is that if you're bringing up something, you want to bring up an idea of what it's about. And if there's a problem, you want to probably bring up some sort of resolution. Because that's the idea is, is kind of thinking through. So in a, a, a capsulized article of 450 to 600 words, you want to kind of you know, foster an idea and bring it through and find some sort of, sort of resolution, which is you know, really the key to all really good writing. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I have. Um, I will leave some cards here if anyone's interested. And if anyone has any questions, you can throw them at me now. You can ask me later. Uh, but, uh, you know, if nothing else, if this is not something you're interested in doing, please read the black, Red and Black. We have a really great article this week about, uh, well, I don't know if you've read it, but there's a, a young man who was accused of uh, stalking his girlfriend, and then they didn't really do anything about it. And then he came back and tried to rape her roommate. So, um, and that, you know, is one of those kind of stories that happens here, and it affects a lot of students. But... Uh, it's one of those things that we want everybody to know about because it's, you know, part of what you have to confront when you're at the University of Georgia. So, anyway. Well, any questions? Questions? No? I, oh, yeah, we got a couple. Yes. All right. Um, the limit of showing has been made about how long you take to cover. Well, I mean, it depends on, on uh, you know, what kind of shape it is. And, I mean, usually if it's in really good shape, we can get it quickly. We can turn it around uh, you know, within obviously, if it's in the if it's in the uh, newspaper, we're on a weekly basis, and so you know you'd have to wait for the next week. But we also put stuff online all the time, um, and so and we put it up when it's ready. So it's really kind of based on the situation of where it's at when it comes in. So I mean, if it comes in, it's in good shape, and we like it, and you sit down, and you read with the editors, uh, it can pretty much go up like the same day that you're finished reading with it. Uh, or if not, the, the, the day after. So there's kind of a, a quick turnaround. We don't, we don't necessarily have to wait on publication cycles so much because being online is publicated, you know, is being, is being printed for us. So, you know. Uh, like how we write them, like the, the style of what it's written, like a narrative form or... Well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I mean, there's lots of different kinds of forms of things that are in the newspaper. Um, you know, we have features and we have game stories and we have opinion pieces. I mean, you know, one of the things that I always enjoy, I mean, I like opinion pieces where people are setting forth an argument or they're coming for us like, this is this, and then they discuss it in a way that kind of investigates why it is and then they come up with some reasons of why it should not be or ways to solve it. So it's kind of an, an investigative way of stating your opinion. So you're not just stating your opinion, you're stating opinion based with a certain level of evidence. You know, so if you say, you know, I think milkshakes are stupid. And then you come forward as like, because milk kills you and it's bad for cows. And you know, if you go through and you, you do this whole thing and it's like, and therefore you shouldn't drink milk. And you're like, oh, okay wow, I'm, I'm not going to do milkshakes anymore. Things like that, I think, they affect people in a certain way because they can relate to that. I mean, there's a lot of things that we cover in the newspaper that they are targeted for specific audiences. And I like, I like those things that, like, gets the collective in it, you know? And whether it's that you, uh, you know, we have a couple of columnists. Um, we have one, uh, Megan White, she was actually a freshman, and she's, She's great because she's writing these columns about things when she was a child about, uh, you know, that would obviously be things that you would remember. And, of course, when she was a child, I was, you know, half college. But uh, so I think it's, it's funny to listen to them now. I was like, oh, is that what you guys were into in 1995? Um, but, you know, she wrote something about, uh, about Dungeons and Dragons not too long ago and, and how she likes to play, but people think she's kind of weird for doing it. And it was, it was one of those things that, like, you know, she, she talks about the whole idea of what it's like to be a gamer and, and be a female and and how it works for her and, and what it means to her. And and, um, and through that process, you kind of understand that, like, uh, she really enjoys it, not because she's trying to join anything, but because it's part of the way she grew up. 
And so in a lot of sense, um, those are really interesting. Yeah. Uh, OK. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> OK. That's all right. It's just. Uh, um, if it's not you, then there's something like yeah. ringing weirdly. <laughs> but I think those are interesting. But I also think there's a, there's a good, like if you have a good story to tell about someone, you know, about someone that you find interesting, you talked with them. I think those are great stories too, because I I always think it's great to highlight like uh, interesting people that are on campus. Um, you know, there's a lot of we get a lot of guff because we think well, all you ever do is write about bad news, which is not true at all. We write a lot of great things. It's just they're not read as much as the bad news because everybody reads the bad news. I mean, the crime notebook, like it or not, gets read every day, all the time, and uh, especially by the people who are in it. Uh, so as much as, so yeah, that's another thing about being forever. If you're in the crime notebook, it's, it's there forever. Um, but uh, so, you know, those are the kind of interesting stories to me, you know. But I mean, if you have an idea about something that you think is fascinating you want to write about. We had someone write about, like last week, about how space is infinite and we're small specks of dust. And it was like really depressing, but I read the whole thing because it's like, man, that's, I think I'm going to go like lie down or something. But it, it had a certain effect on me because it was, it was like something that, it was like this philosophical idea of like, you know, if you think about it, we're nothing. And, uh, you know, yeah, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't, but, and that's the cool thing about this is that you can experiment and pretty much write what you want. I mean, you know, I don't have any particular style of writing that I like or don't like. Um, I just like good writing. And if you're making an argument or you're setting your case, then that's fine with me. So I don't know if that answers your question, but. Yes, anybody else? No, no, yes. Two questions on the actual paper while you're here. Okay. First, does the administration like practice any kind of prior review over the Empire? We are completely independent from the University of Georgia. We are not even on campus. We broke free from the university in 1980. We were on campus. We were on Memorial Hall uh, before, which is right that way. that way. I don't know where I am. No, uh, we are Baxter Hill. We're on the top of Baxter Hill. You know where Brumby Hall is? Brumby Hall, okay, we're cat corner from Brumby Hall. We've got a Papa John's here and a Domino's here. Yeah. And we're, we've got the, uh, the Jimmy John's right so here. all your funding comes from advertising? Yes, advertising. We actually have two cell phone towers on our roof where pe people pay money to be in our cell. During football season, we rent out our parking lot. Uh, it's $40 a spot. We're sold out. There's like 40 spots. Yeah, it's completely, and we have other things. I mean, obviously, uh, I don't know if you've seen Ampersand, which has just been started. Uh, this is another funding project. We have a thing called Athens Living, which will come out. We do a visitor's guide. Um, so we have a lot of little things that we do that put together help us make enough money to pay for everything. So, And we do okay. Uh, part of the reason that we shifted towards a weekly format from the daily it's not that we're losing money now, but we probably will. When the economy bounces back, will you be going back to daily? Probably not. Um, and merely for the fact that <clears throat> the main function of the red and black is to get students ready for if this is what they want to do for the real world within journalism. And newspapers are dying every day, but the online product is a big thing. I mean, it's not that people aren't reading news anymore. They're just not reading it in this crazy form that gets inks on their hands, which, you know, it's not really the case anymore. But, um, you know, newspapers, <clears throat> whenever they find a way, like newspapers would not exist if people could make money online selling advertising. Like there would be no newspapers if you could make money selling advertising online. But does, do you look at online ads? No, they're annoying, right? I mean, nobody pays attention and you don't, if you looked at a website, like, can you, do you have a website? Some companies do. I mean, like, Facebook is totally ad-supported, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, Facebook, yeah, but Facebook is a different thing. Because the ads are like something that, targeted. yeah, the ads are targeted for particular things. And then they pay the right to Facebook to be there. It's not like Facebook goes out and says, hey, 
advertise with us. People say, hey, I want to advertise with Facebook. Facebook is like the 300 million pound gorilla in the room that, like there are websites that do make money. That's true. So another question, why can't newspapers sell online subscriptions? Why is that, like I hear like that, 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 that's just I don't know, I, I don't know. They, the, <laughs> the biggest mistake newspapers ever made was decide to say, hey, here's all this product that we make and it costs money and people, we pay money to do it. And you know what we do? We're just gonna give it to you for free. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. It's like I make coffee mugs, isn't but I'm not going to sell them. Isn't that what you do? Huh? Isn't that what you do? Uh, well, a college newspaper is a bit different in that sense because a lot of times it is funded by the university. Um, we are actually thinking of doing an online thing. I mean, the paper itself is given away for free anyway, and there's arguments to say you might as well give all papers away for free because the money that they make on like a quarter or 50 cents to get a paper is not really enough to pay the cost of what it is, it doesn't make that much money. Advertising is the big cash cow of that. So since we give this paper away for free to begin with, because why would you pay? There are some colleges that you pay for their paper, and maybe that's a good thing. But I, I think all papers should Honestly, be free. Like based on based on that article I read, I was very surprised and very pleased with the. I did read the article mm -hmm. on, the, on the guy. Um, right. And I would say that your paper now is, is much better at investigative reporting than my local paper has ever done. Like. Yeah. Well, I mean, and we have, and that's. We have the luxury of having a lot of people who do that. And, you know, like the guy who wrote it, Jake Timmett, he's already had a couple internships. He's got an internship lined up in D.C. in the, in the, in the summertime. And I feel like I'm taking up more time than I have to now. No, no, that's okay. Right. My, my only other question was, um, wait, how do you pick what sound bites you put in the paper? Because it seems like you do Oh, no, that's just whatever comes that. in. That's actually, we don't get as much as, yeah, you would so think more people. Yeah, there's not that much to choose from. People just don't. It's a weird thing. Do you think thing. that people just write into that just to see if they can get what they say? Like, like yeah. Because I, I, like, I read like a couple weeks ago the one about the milk walking through. The yeah. The yeah. Was. Right. I thought that was kind of that might have been just a business decision. Yeah, exactly. And that's and that's where the borderline of not being a family newspaper comes in, because yeah, I mean there'll be certain things that just I don't I, I never know what's going to offend someone from day to day until I get in my phone's ringing, and uh, you wrote this and it's. I can't believe you wrote this, and um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's kind of, uh, the thing about a newspaper which makes it most difficult than anything else is that it's supposed to be for a broad spectrum of people, and you can't please everyone. Like, if we're Tennis Magazine, if you're a golfer, like, you don't care, because you like tennis. That's why you got Tennis Magazine, and so you can target that audience, you know, and maybe there's people who fight over kinds of rackets, but they're fighting over the same thing. In a newspaper, you're trying to reach a broad spectrum of people, and everybody has a different idea of what the world should be. And so they're not going to agree with what you write. And it's interesting that if someone agrees with something they write, we write, they'll say, that writer wrote a great thing. But if they disagree, they'll say, the red and black is horrible, as opposed to the writer who, so if you agree, it's that person. But if you don't, it's the red and black's fault. So. And Rio Fano makes very, I like sure. him. Like, he's a knowledgeable friend of me. Um, uh, <laughs> Thank okay, you. I've, I've read. I've, 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 read, I've actually been reading the red and black the actual paper copy. How much okay. more is online? How much am I missing by not reading the online version? A lot. A lot. Yeah. There's a, there's tons of at least 25 stories a day. 20 to 25 stories a day. Like we don't put the daily football news in here. Okay, I actually lied. I have read online versions because do you tweet every story that gets put online? Not every single story, but most every story. Uh, it's either on Facebook or it's or it or it's on Twitter. So yeah, in some form of social networking, every story that gets on the red and black is put somewhere else where you can read it. So anyway. Um, I know you probably have to go. I have two things for you to sure. wrap up with. Um, people are probably wondering, LA Public Defenders are probably don't have any chance of getting published. Um, what are their shots of, you know, if they turn in a decent piece, getting published? If it's good, I'll push it. It'll get published. Like, is online count for the grade? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It has to, because, I mean, <laughs> honestly, getting in the paper is a fight. Like, we have, some of our best writers don't get their articles in the paper, because... I was really impressed with Megan Lee, like, oh, that was pretty cool, because I, I met her she's great. last summer, and I was like, wow, that's somebody I know yeah. writing in the red and black. She's great, and she writes great stuff, I mean, every week. So, if it's good, we're going to put it in, like, that's what we do. Uh, and if it needs work, we'll help it and, and get it ready to go in, but yeah, there's, we don't... You know, we just don't want to, people think we're a, a way place for bad articles because we're the college paper, 
And that's not the case at all. I mean, we are, whether people believe this or not, we are, last year we actually were awarded the pacemaker, which is given to the best college paper in the country. So, and uh, we won that for the website as well. We're up for the website award again this year, not newspaper, but it's a tough, it's a tough uh, award to get because there's 400 college newspapers. So, um, you know, having said that, it's, it's, you know, it's lots of people read it. It's a good publication. Uh, no doubt if you write something, you will get some response from it from the public. And that's kind of a difficult thing when you put yourself out there. So, uh, so that's a great one to end on. Thank okay. you very much. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right.